All right, how are you doing? He's hoping that all is well with you from wherever you're watching us. This is Debate 411. I've been receiving a lot of questions on what 411 means on the show. But let's keep going. One day, one time, you'll be able to understand. But of course, this is that place where we put issues on the table. We debate them and of course get different views with an aim of getting homegrown solutions to those issues. And my name as always is Eugene Anangwe. Today we're talking about the issue of social media. We've used it severally. Some of us are either on it and some of us only see it and hear about it. But we're going to be looking at the issue of the place of social media in building democracies. Are we using it to the right cause or for the right reasons? These are some of the issues we'll be asking ourselves right here in the program. Who else better to help us understand this matter other than social media enthusiasts on the program? We have Faith Mbabazi. We've seen her on our screens before and she's here feeling a bit nostalgic. Kind of. Kind I've of. I've been here for about two years now. Yes. So it's been a while. Along the way in the program, we'll let you come sit here and then... Wow, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Welcome to the program. Faith. Thank you so much. Yes, we also have Alan Bryan, who is a freelance journalist. Alan, welcome to Debate 411. Thank you. So We've much. seen you react during the show, and of course, now you are on the seat. It's good to see things from this side. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you and welcome to the program. We also have Nelson, who's also a social media enthusiast. Welcome to Debate 411. Thank you for the invite. And David Truvi, welcome to Debate 411. Thank you. I'm a huge fan of the show. Thank you so much. Yes. Now, basically, um, what we're going to be looking at, as, as I said in the intro, is looking at the power of social media and its place in building democracies. And, and first of all, the first question I'd throw to all of you is, do we really all understand the power of social media? When someone says, you know, social media is taking over, when it comes to addressing issues, when it comes to communicating with people and staying connected, do we really understand the power of social media, faith, personally, from your perspective? I do, I do understand uh, the importance of social media. And I have a feeling most people do understand the importance of social media. Um, I, I just have one example. Back in 2011, mm -hmm. when the Arab up springs were up and everybody was on social media, we got the latest information from that. And uh, nearly the whole of North Africa and, and the Middle East was up and down just because of social media. So that ha that, that's, that's one simple, simple thing that will tell you that social media is quite important and we really need to pay so much attention to the importance and how uh, it, it's bringing the world into what I would call a global village. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it always feels like I'm just across into the United States of America when I'm tweeting somebody who is insulting my president or who is insulting my country. And it feels like I'm a, you know, storm just, throw just away. A throw away with, with this person. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Alan, for you, as, as, as she says, she personally feels that she understands the power of social media and gives examples of how uh, that, 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 that happens or resonates with her. But looking at what people tweet, when you talk of Twitter, looking at what people post when it comes to Facebook and those who use WhatsApp and the way they use it, do you sit back and say, these people, do they know what they're playing with? Do they know the power of this device or this application or this thing we call social media? Are we abusing it? Do you feel we are using it to the maximum, uh, to the full potential that it has? I, I think it depends uh, on how each and every person chooses to use it. Because at the end of the day, it is just a reflection of our own personalities. If you have bad manners, you will reflect them on social media. Mm -hmm. If you're a good mannered person, it will show. So people who think uh, uh, this thing is not powerful, they, they usually find out the same way you'd find out uh, about maybe the traffic law when you break it, you know. You may have your car and you may not think of how powerful the, the law is until you break it. So uh, those who uh, you know, cross the boundaries, there, there are ways in which they will be reminded of how powerful it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Some people uh, don't know how powerful it is, but you can wake up one day and you're in the middle of things. Uh, everyone is talking about you. and. That's when you feel the power of the social, power of social media. media. He says yeah. it's a reflection of who we are. Uh, if you have bad manners, you will just take the same on social media. But there are people who have said that some people hide behind these social media platforms. 
you know, they don't portray the true selves of, of who they are, with mm. what the words they say, with the things they do. What's your perspective on that area? Yeah, it's an interesting question, you know. Should people be forced to have their real name on social media? Um, Facebook has gotten, you know, much stricter on that. Um, but on Twitter, for example, you're able to have a parody account or an account that's not your own name. You don't need to identify yourself. Um, but the rules and regulations that govern social media and engagement and whether or not people are nice to each other, they exist regardless of whether or not you have a name. So I think, you know, the, the, the key thing is that social media is a place of connection. Mm -hmm. You know, humans, we, we like to connect. That's, that's the purpose, you know, of, of our being. We connect with others. Um, and so with social media and providing that connection, people are able to experience new things, find out new information. And I think that's where the power lies, actually, the connection. Mm. We're currently building up to the program. But mm. Nelson, let me bring you in because uh, there are those who say, you know, yes, it's, it's a connection. But the society today, we have seen analysts who have said social media is bridging, or not, not bridging, actually, it's breaking. Um, you know, that connection, that human-to-human -human connection. We have now ended up going too much into social media. When we're talking of WhatsApp and Twitter and Facebook, you may be WhatsApping Faith and she's just seated next to you. Yes. And you feel more comfortable talking to her on WhatsApp or on Twitter than talking to her, you know, <laughs> on a face-to-face -face basis. Social life is dead. <laughs> yes, so, so are we killing it? Are we killing... Is, is social media killing this human-to-human -human connection that we once had? I, I don't think the social media is killing it. I think, uh, the, uh, in general, the society has changed and in, in a different way. Like, more people spend time at work rather than socializing with people. More people are focusing on other stuff than families or relationships that they had. So the only thing they, they use is, like, WhatsApping all day, and then they think it's cool, and then it saves them time. But the, if you look deep down, even the way the social network that we use are designed, actually are designed in a way that where, like David just said, connection. Actually, they don't connect. Because, for example, if I, I put on my Facebook, my mom has died. Mm -hmm. Everyone likes it. We don't have a button that says, I dislike, I'm, I, I dislike or I'm sad with you. Uh, compassion. So they, they design in a way where they remove the human part. They keep only the, the, the part where it's evolving into work, creating business opportunities, or just setting an opinion. But Faith, Faith mentioned before you, uh, we, you even started answering, said social life is, 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 is dead. I mean, the social connection is dead. And you say you don't feel like social media today is disconnecting us from the human to human a connection. Faith, do you agree with, with what he said? Oh, I wouldn't agree with him because um, we're in an era where everybody is stuck to their computer. We got smartphones, everybody has their tablets. And I don't need to go visit Tuvi. I just need to Skype him and say, hi, this is Faith. And, and that's all. We're not going to get together. We're not going to share a drink. And it, it becomes too, too bad when it's, it's, it's in the middle of uh, the younger generation, you know, the teens, you'll find most of the time they're on their phones. They're either WhatsApping, they're either on Facebook, uh, they're on Instagram, and they don't even have time with their parents. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and their parents think it's cool. I don't have time with my kids because they're busy with technology. So I have a feeling that our social life has totally died down. Mm -hmm. And it's dying down because of, you know, where we're going. This is where the world is going. It's, it's becoming a global village. I don't have to travel thousands and thousands of miles to say hello to a friend of mine who lives in, in, in the US or who lives in China. I just need to have a smartphone, get access to the internet, send a WhatsApp, and that's all. And, and you know, the most important thing uh, that people are actually missing today, uh, if you look at uh, a generation of maybe us and the ones who are slightly older than us, uh, you'll notice that their, their social fabric is still intact. Mm -hmm. you because know they, they never had social media that they time. They never had that. The WhatsApps and the Twitters. Yeah. And, and for today, we are, social, we, we, we are disconnected. Yeah, it's, it's, it's happened so many times. But she says earlier that you know, the perception we have is being on social media is cool. You know, having an Instagram account and, uh, and, and, and posting something and going back 
every second to check how many people have posted <laughs> or liked your post. You're actually addicted. Uh, yes. To uh, your phone. <laughs> isn't it cool? I mean, some people say this, this is the in thing. And, mm. and, and those were their days and these are our days. How do we ensure that the, the, that social fabric, that connection remains intact, whether we have the being cool part of it or not? David. Yeah, it's, it's a really interesting point. We have to ask ourselves, what are people doing on social media? You know, uh, they're organizing to see their friends. They're having a conversation with their friends. If, if Faith and I are Skyping in different parts of the world, we're connecting with each other. We're having a conversation. We're building a social relationship. So I think even though we, we are seeing a, a huge increase in people communicating via technology, they're still communicating with, it's still people talking to people. So I don't think we should forget that point. It's a really important point. Um, just over the weekend, I was, I was hanging out with my friends and we organized a, an event and we had a WhatsApp group. So it meant that we could all stay in touch, we could build our friendship. Um, the other day a friend called me on Facebook from, from Canada. Um, they're like, I didn't realize it was this easy. And I know we're now closer because of that conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and Eugene, today we met for the first time face to face. Mm -hmm. But I felt a connection with you already because we've discussed on social media, on Twitter many times. Mm -hmm. um, so I think even though there is a difference between people communicating and connecting offline to online, I don't think we should say it's all bad. Um, because the connections are there and, and they are real. Um, what we need to make sure of is that there are opportunities for people to connect face to face and for young people to develop the social skills that they need to succeed in life. Mm. Earlier on, uh, Faith mentioned the power of social media and, and, and the role it played in even passing the communication and letting the whole world understand what was going on during the Arab Spring. And this brings us to the issue of social media and democracy and the place of social media in promoting democracy. Um, where do we cross the line? Because there are those who will say, you know what, it's my social media account. I have the full right to write or post whatever I want. And, and there are people who have gone to an extent of posting stuff that some people have felt, this is insulting to my leader, this is insulting to my country. And they felt that that is democracy. Alan, just a few days ago we had a hashtag, someone tell Kagame. And, 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 and the Kenyans on Twitter were up in arms posting whatever they were posting in terms of what they feel about President Paul Kagame. And, that, and for them, they feel that that is democracy. I'm, I'm able to say it without anybody coming and telling me whatever they want to tell me about what I've posted. First of all, your opinion on this. Well, what I can say is that uh, the, the, one of the best things about social media is that you, you, you can curate your own information. You can choose what you consume. Mm -hmm. You can choose your followers, even your, the same people you're following, you can choose to mute some of them. Mm -hmm. So first of all, you, you still have some power on what comes your way. So it is also democracy on your part. Then on the part of the people who are, you know, uh, maybe using the, the hashtag, uh, someone tell Kagame, it is their right. It is their Twitter account. They can use it the way they want. But uh, what I can say also is that social media is essentially social. Yeah? The same things you say in a bar are the same things you can say on, on Twitter or Facebook. Mm -hmm. But still with the bar, if you say something that is offensive, uh, the law can catch up with you. Mm -hmm. So even on Twitter, much as you have all the democracy to write anything and post anything, you can be sued for what you're posting. You can be, you know, so as long as uh, you are not breaking any law, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. You feel yeah. it's a, dem a democratic right. Faith, I'll bring you on this uh, before we go back to Nelson on that issue of, of, of feeling like it's a democracy. We are able to speak what we say or whatever we want to say. After all, I can have an, a name that is anonymous and I can still be able to air out my views. And that, for me, I feel that is democracy. This, this is what some of these people feel, that I'm able to speak freely there mm. than speak freely when I'm face to face with you or something sure. like that. Let's talk about that issue sure. and that particular incident that happened on Twitter a few days yeah, ago. Yeah, looking at the, um, at the hashtag KOT, someone tell Kagame, I, I really thought it was very interesting. And it was something good that our neighbors are they feel Rwanda is part of the East African community. And they have, they have a say in what's happening in the community. 
uh, Kenyans and Rwandans have been, you know, they've been friends for a while. We have bilateral ties. And they feel it's okay to comment about what's happening in Rwanda. And, and to me, I thought it was okay. It was okay to comment about what they thought. But one thing that was brought to light is that so many people out there did not really know why Rwandans chose the way they chose. Why do they want President Kagame to stand for his third term? So I think airing out their views, uh, bringing out the hashtag someone tell Kagame was one good way of Rwandans, uh, political analysts or whoever else is interested in that, to come out and say, hey, look, this is the reason why Rwandans have chosen to go this way. Um, and, and something else, I mean, freedom of expression. People have the freedom to express what they feel like. Oh yes, to some extent I believe there should be some bit of regulation. Uh, I believe you should not insult me because of what you think. Because you're Muslim and I'm Catholic or he's Hindu. Or I, I, that's what I believe in and my faith is, is that way. And that's how I've chosen. So you don't have a right to insult me. It's quite difficult to uh, regulate We'll go deeper media, in the part of the regulation. But, 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 you, but you believe that hashtag or that particular incident that happened there, for you, you feel... It was, it was, it was a, a great opportunity. It was a great opportunity, yes. a good opportunity. And I, it really showed us that Kenyans really think about Rwanda. They have some time to, 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 to follow what's going on. And it was a great opportunity for Rwandans themselves, or friends of Rwanda, to say, hey, come on, look here. There, there are reasons why Rwandans have chosen their destiny. There are reasons why Rwandans have chosen to go this way. So to me, I actually thought it was a flaw for Rwandans to, exp to express what they think. Mm. Do you think Rwandans took that opportunity? You personally as a person on social mm. media and very active on Twitter, for example, and, and, and this kind of uh, Twitter battle, some have called them twiffs, you know, between KOT and Rwot, <laughs> Rwandans on Twitter. Uh, do you think that Rwandans on Twitter and other social media platforms took it positively and, and, and felt that this is a democracy they're allowed to say what they think, mm. and so it's fine. Do you think that is how you read it from your perspective? Uh, I, I think um, from what I saw on, on my TR, most people in Rwanda thought it was an office rather than a way of starting a debate, mm -hmm. which for me, as she, she, she was just saying, for me it was more someone tell Kagame can be us telling him what we want. Mm -hmm. It wasn't actually a bad uh, hashtag. But at the same time, we felt it like it was an insulting that it's coming from Kenya rather than from us. And then we started to be defensive. And then we started to say, it's clean, mm -hmm. it's secure, therefore it cannot tell us. It's none of your business. It's none of your business. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of yeah. saying, you know, we appreciate what Kagame is doing and therefore we want him. Or we, we appreciate what he's doing but we think someone else can do a better job than him. So it's, it was a way of, we felt like we were offending, rather than expressing to them what we feel about Kagame in, mm. in your term. David, you saw mm. this on your TL. Sure. Y your thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like all popular, you know, hashtags. Uh, someone tell CNN it was incredible, you know? When CNN called Kenya a hotbed of terror, you know, KOT took to their, took to their uh, timelines and they blasted CNN. And so what it really shows is that regardless of, of what the conversation is about, these conversations, these voices are being amplified in ways that didn't exist before. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at what's been happening in the United States, you know, in terms of race relations, there is someone who maybe has 500 followers who tweets a photo of how a white person is arrested versus how a black person is arrested. It gets 25,000 retweets. I would love to get 25,000 retweets for something. <laughs> um, it hasn't happened yet, but wish me luck. But what we're seeing here is that this huge amplification of people's voices, and I think that's where the power of social media comes in, and that's, I think, maybe what someone might not understand. Um, you know, the teenager in Ruhingeri who tweets a, a great photo and it gets retweeted a thousand times, they probably didn't realise that that was going to happen. Um, but that's incredibly important, and, and it's a great thing that happens. Mm. So you feel like uh, we need to take advantage of that. Absolutely. But at the end of the day, would you advise and say, you know what, look at the power of, of, of social media. Mm. So you, or ye, let me use the Shakespeare English here, ye that, <laughs> <laughs> that is using social media just for, for, for likes and looking for retweets, change your minds and just use them to promote human rights and call for development, come up with hashtags to address a certain social issue. Would you push people for you, Alan, 
would you write in, in your column with an urge to make <laughs> sure that everybody changes their social media platforms for human rights promotion and for development and good governance? No, I wouldn't. Because mm -hmm. uh, like before, I said it is, it is social. It is just the same way we hold the discussions in maybe over a campfire or in a bar. You cannot just say, let us all talk about development. No. There will be one guy who wants to talk about something else, another person wants to talk about something else. Maybe what I can say is that uh, people need to, be keep, uh, need to be reminded of the power of social media and told to be responsible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for me, just being responsible is enough. I don't have to keep tweeting about development, but I have to be responsible. But you've seen governments. Mm -hmm. I mean, fall to ashes just because of social media, yes. where the media is tightly controlled, and the only option they have is, is, is social media. Is social media. Yes. So, I mean, we can't run away from it. We really, really need it. So, would you tell would you tell these people who are always just taking photos of their food and putting it on social media, tell them, come on, put it to good use. Tweet about governance issues, tweet about human rights violations around your area, tweet about issues of water, electricity, would you force them to no, do that? No, I wouldn't, because everybody has the expression, to, the freedom to, to express what they feel. Mm -hmm. um, if, if I'm not a political fan, if I'm not a political activist, and um, I enjoy cooking, I'm a stay-home mom, I'll, I'll, I'll tweet the best recipes, I'll, I'll, I'll Facebook the best chapatis I make at home, and you're not going to force me to do that. So it, it's, it's me to choose what I would like to Facebook, what I would like to tweet. Mm. But uh, coming back to what you said, how can we uh, you know, promote uh, the sense of, of, of everyone, you know, citizen journalism, mm -hmm. everyone being part of developing your own country? Uh, the other day, um, I was watching a news, a news item. Uh, there's a city, I think, in Spain, a city of about 330,000 people. and. Uh, Nearly everybody is on Twitter. Actually, people who are as old as my grandma are on Twitter. And they're using Twitter to speak to their administrative authorities, to ask them to mow their lands, to ask them to give them better service delivery, to ask them, and it's working perfectly for them. I'm just giving you a cool example of here in Rwanda. I, when, when I don't, last night I had a power cut off for about four hours, and I just tweeted reg, and in a while, they sent technicians to come and, and, and you know, rectify the past situations we had. And that's exactly what I'm asking. For instance, Nelson, mm -hmm. should we say if, 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 if two people or three people can be able to bring an impact through their tweet mm. to promote good governance or to bring in or to have uh, uh, an issue corrected, then what if we also involve those ones who are probably misusing these social media platforms? Probably will have a big change. Would you force oh, people and tell them, look, Tweet about these things. It's more important than what you're tweeting. Or I think we are using the word misusing mm -hmm. uh, in, in the wrong way itself. Because, like, like she said, if you're a mom and then you like to cook, you would put you, the food you cooked down there on Instagram, on Facebook there, because you want comments on how you can improve your, your health or nutrition of your kids. Mm -hmm. It's fine. You're still building your nation because you are contributing to the, to the debate about about food. Not necessarily that everything has to be politics, but something can be how we consume even the policy of, 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 of the Minister of Health mm -hmm. that tells us to eat. Maybe someone who is somewhere there is saying, you know what, I think it's better to, to drink milk. And another person will say, no, it's fine. Like, people can always go into politics or governance, but in a different style. In a different way in a different way mm -hmm. of going in. Mm -hmm. I think the mom who posts food, and then he's teach, she's teaching young people how to eat healthy. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's the best way. In one minute, David, mm -hmm. would you say, let's just let them be, you know? My tweet should be my choice. Yeah, and, I and think. And so just let me be, it's my, it's my <laughs> space. Sure, people should tweet what they're passionate about. You know, they should post what they're passionate about. But at the same time, it's the role of governments and businesses to engage people in a conversation about the things that are important to them. That's what you advise. We're taking a very short break and of course we're coming back to move the conversation forward and of course we'll bring in the issue of regulation and talk deeper about it on whether it's even possible and how are we even going to be able to do that if we 
all say that that's the direction to go when we come back, all right? We're coming back in a very short while. Keep tweeting. Tell us what your thoughts are on social media and its place in building democracies and building nations. All you need to do is just use the hashtag debate411. Let us know what your thoughts are on this particular issue. We're coming back in a very short while, so do stay with us and don't go away. Yes, we are ready. Ten seconds to go. All right. That's the wide, eh? No. Yes. If you look at, at African nations, including Rwanda, almost 50% comes from donors. So how can these countries so that are beggars, most of these I countries continue. are beggars, you know? So how can a beggar Fund another big. All right. There is so, no so you want him to, to so apologize to you? Doesn't no, 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 to the industry. To the mm. industry. Don't mm. misquote to me. Industry. You are not right. the entire. You but are a journalist. If he so wishes, so. he can apologize no, no, to no, me No, 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 no. Well. You are not an entire. <laughs> can I go on? he might misquote me. This is not I the know. point. You are not Listen, an okay. entire. Let me, let me. Article 101 has two clauses. The first clause says that the term of office is seven years, renewable once. The second clause says under no circumstances. You mark that word under no circumstances. So that word makes this article intangible. Our constitutions should reflect the will of the people for whom they are made. The Green Party is putting itself in a very interesting position where it doesn't only oppose the other political parties, but it is also opposing a very large number of Rwandans who are saying this is what we want. Give the Rwandan government time, but we shouldn't say, okay, they, they're supposed to do everything and we youth, we are sitting back and wait for them to set just the right environment. No. But this is what you said, you're here, and no, the New Times you say it's not a Bible, so no, you're no, here this, to respond. Let her retract this. this, this yes, no, no, I don't, don't retract it. No. I don't retract mm. it. No, no. Sincerely speaking, listen to me, you mm. people. Mm. You don't fear me at all. Mm. On my age and my what, I can't really be intimidated <laughs> by you. <laughs> I still have the right to blame anyone or to judge anyone because, as I said, yes, I'm a student, but then an entrepreneur because I own a business that employs three people. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for the tweets and for the feedback. Debate 411, that's the hashtag to keep using. Let's keep this conversation going. We'll see you again next time. Goodbye for now. My name is Eugene Anangwe. <laughs>
But if you look closely, indeed there is regulation. If you tweet something offensive, I can report you using my Twitter account. I can report you to Twitter. Mm -hmm. And if they find that indeed what you're tweeting is irresponsible, they will suspend your account. But that, that, that might not you know, uh, solve the, 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 the damage. They will probably only pull down the tweet and suspend, but your image... Yes, I'll but... create but another account. But but yeah, can, they can else. create another account. But it is one of the measures. Mm -hmm. eh? Right now, they're actually talking about uh, uh, removing uh, stolen uh, mm -hmm. jokes. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because uh, some comedians have complained that they tweet a joke and someone else tweets the same joke. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> that guy is getting all the likes and... Uh, the retweets are not the comedian. Mm. So the regulations are there, even uh, Facebook, all these platforms, mm -hmm. you can report. Mm -hmm. But even without looking at the regulations set by the social media platforms, we already have the laws that govern each country. And those laws talk about, uh, you know, defaming people, insulting people, uh, spreading uh, 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 Rumors. pornographic uh, things, and, and, uh, uh, you know, spreading information that may be harmful to national security. Everything is there. Mm. It is just implementing it. Mm. Yeah. T talking of, 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 of the practicability of these laws or these regulations, do you feel that they're enough to, to, to help protect someone out there who might or whose rights might be violated by those people who are using social media? I, I don't think it's ever going to be possible. Mm -hmm. um, social media has come out to serve so many people, to give them the right to, to be able to speak what they would never have been able to speak. So, um, but one, one of my major concerns has always been privacy is very important for somebody. And as much as privacy is important, you find that we don't, ha we don't have any more privacy these days. When you open someone's Facebook uh, page, They'll say they had this for breakfast, they had that for lunch, uh, they're, they're, they're wearing this. They're <laughs> you know, we don't have private life anymore. So it has to start with we, the individuals. Do we think it's quite important for us to protect, not spread all our information on the social media network? But he said, tweet what you want, express oh, yes. yourself. Oh yes, sometimes I think it's, uh, uh, people are ignorant about it. Um, when, when, you become, when you become a victim to, to, to being hacked and someone is using your, your, your Facebook account or your Twitter account, they've hacked you and, and they're, they're spreading you know, fake information about you or about somebody, uh, that's when you'll know the importance of privacy. Mm -hmm. But we're in a world where we don't have privacy anymore. We're in a world where you cannot control everything. But if it, were, it was my world and it, it was my world that I'm running, I would definitely have to regulate social media, but unfortunately, I can't. Mm -hmm. And um, the concern is—I mean, you've been—you've been seeing on, on uh, the America and the U.S. Uh, race where Hillary Clinton is having issues with her with her emails. Uh, this has happened all over, and I mean, it's a global challenge, and we're, we're not going to go away from it. Probably, uh, the more the technology is growing, probably we'll have some—you know—more ways of, of protecting. Uh, our privacy and, and, and having more strict regulation, but it's quite impossible. It's, it's quite impossible. Nelson, mm -hmm. in your own opinion, what would be the best way to regulate this thing? Or do you think it should just be left the way it is? Let people tweet, let people talk. It's their space. But I think the best way, the best thing you can do right now is um, it's like uh, social literacy, mm -hmm. social media literacy. Mm -hmm. How do you teach some uh, kids since they are young? how to be responsible on what they're, 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 they're putting there online, all those things. So it needs to come as a culture itself. Because right now it feels like the platforms are there and then it's a jungle. Mm -hmm. Anyone can say whatever they want, I'm venturing how they into want, it. <laughs> and then you have to consume everything mm -hmm. down there. Because one, if you look, uh, if you, if you look uh, into even, let's see, let's take an example here. How many people on Twitter, for example? And those, and those people on Twitter, what, what are they discussing all day? Most of the times, music, or food, football. or drinks, or football, mm -hmm. most of the times. But when a waster or, or egg doesn't bring electricity, 
the, the only question they ask, when is the electricity is coming? coming back. Mm. And no one is asking, for example, why don't we solve this issue of electricity? Once and for all. And mm. for all. Mm. Because for them, it's just a moment of saying what they feel right now, instead of looking for solutions out, out there. Mm. So I think it's an issue of... Yeah, it's expressing what you feel. Mm. Yes. Mm. So do you guys think that Rwandans on Twitter, for example, or other media, or other social media platforms, I'm, I'm dwelling a, a little bit more on Twitter because we've seen, f for example, what she said earlier on, what people have been able to do just using Twitter. Um, um, but do you really feel that Rwandans on Twitter are a united lot? When it comes to, you know, if it, there's a governance issue, would they come together strongly, united, to tackle that issue? Or everybody's just on their own. This is a field where I will say what I want, I'll ask for my own behalf. Do you think that Rwandans on Twitter are a united lot that can face Kenyans on Twitter, for instance, <laughs> in the name of defending the pride of our land? Uh, first of all, I would not advise against uh, 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 someone to take on Kenyans on Twitter. Why? <laughs> first of all, they, uh, they, 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 they have the numerical strength. Yeah. Yeah. They're quite many. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Very aggressive. They're, they're quite aggressive, mm -hmm. I can say that. So s s you don't have to, to get into every fight. You just sit back and yeah. receive your lashing. <laughs> so <laughs> no, not, not receive your lashing. But going back to Rwandans on Twitter, it would not be fair to say that they're not, they're not united. I think they are, uh, especially from the time we got the hashtag uh, R O T, uh, R W O T, and uh, they, they, I can cite some cases where Rwandans have used Twitter to do something important. There was a time there was uh, an accident, I think, in the U.S., mm. and someone had died, and there, there was an effort to, you know, raise funds to to get the body back to Rwanda. Mm and everyone was tweeting about that until at some point even the government noticed that you know Rwandans are concerned about this issue and, and they stepped in the minister of uh, foreign affairs uh, uh, Louis Mshikiwabo tweeted and said the government is going to work on this issue and solve it so maybe that hasn't happened uh, as often as you would like but they are there are cases where Rwandans have, you, have stood united. Have been united. What of the issue of of government institutions or national institutions feeling the pressure that the president has been active on Twitter and has been vocal when he talks of incorporating, you know, uh, technology in delivering services, and we sort of saw an, a, a rise in number of Twitter handles of government institutions who today, when you look at the history of how they use them, mm. you'll see the last tweet is probably three or four months ago. <laughs> Do you feel that there is pressure to, 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 to incorporate use of social media on, on, on people who probably don't really feel comfortable using them? David, do you feel that this was just too much pressure for them? No, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the role of government institutions to serve the people. Mm -hmm. um, and social media is a way to serve mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to come back to what you said about one of the tweets, the tweet being three months old. I don't actually think that's true. Mm -hmm. You know, if we look at some of these accounts, they have over 20,000 followers. You know, the government of Rwanda ha account almost has 80,000 followers. If we go to some other countries, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs might have 2,000 followers. And yet in Rwanda, it's, it's up to almost 20,000. So what is that saying? It shows us that people are engaged with the work of these institutions. Like Nelson said, like Faith said, people, these institutions, they're responding. I think that pressure is a really great thing. Mm -hmm. um, a friend of mine uh, recently had an issue with Mutuel de Sante. And so, you know, tweeted the minister. And the conversation was 30 or 40 tweets long. Um, but they got to the bottom of the issue and they solved it. Wow. Um, and that's, that's the power of social media. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, I would get announcements about when to go to Umuganda mm -hmm. in my Umudugudu, mm -hmm. you know, um, through social media. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that pressure exists. I think it's a good thing. Um, I think it helps citizens be served better and I think it should continue. Mm. Faith, too much pressure to handle for these government institutions no. and public officials? Not really. I actually think, uh, I'm getting back to what he said, social media literacy. People should be able to know that social media is the most, it's the cheapest, most convenient and quickest way of passing on information. Do you think this information is shared? This feeling, do you think it's shared? I highly doubt, because mm. if it was, well, there's some institutions that uh, 
provide you know, the day-to-day -day services. If you look at WASAC, if you look at REG, if you look at Health Ministry, if you look at uh, Village Uruguiro, you know, these are institutions that you know, give us what we need like immediately, mm -hmm. what we use every day. But let's say, for example, you want to tweet Nyaruguru district or some other mm. district. It will be very hard for you to immediately get a response. Mm. So I believe we really need to, to put more, more pressure. More pressure on these individuals who are you know, holding these posts, public administration posts, to be able to understand that this is the only way, most effective way, that's going to help you solve your problems without spending transport, without spending airtime, and, you know, without engaging in these lengthy discussions of, you know, come to my office tomorrow, you know, the long processes of bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. So to some extent, I think there's no pressure at all. Mm -hmm. It is not there. Because if it was there, we would be doing more than what we're doing we'll right We'll be doing now. more than what we're doing. Do you share the same feeling? Uh, I don't think necessarily we need to add pressure to them. I think we need actually to tell them, you know, uh, it's part of your job is actually to reply, to listen, and then to solve mm -hmm. what the issues uh, is there. But at the same time, I think we have too many government institution ghost counts that are there and then still sleeping down there. Well, I don't know where we, I don't know what the reason behind it, but probably I think they don't understand the value and the culture. Of, uh, ghost of accounts, they exist, I'm sure, but he feels that that was an exaggeration three months ago. But I'm sure if we oh asked yes, our it viewers, is true. True. if we it's asked true. our viewers now yeah. to mention ghost accounts, on Twitter or on Facebook of these institutions, I'm sure we'll have a number sure. of them. <laughs> yeah, you can, yeah, you can absolutely find what, them. What, yes. what I can add from, from what he's saying is that it is important for social media literacy to take place. And personally, I've been involved in uh, situations where I train people on why they need social media and how to use it responsibly. Mm -hmm. uh, what, one thing that I have noticed from the discussion is that some organizations do not take social media seriously. Mm -hmm. uh, you can have, uh, for example, maybe a government institution or a corporate company. They have an event. They will call the, the person from TV, call the person from radio, call the newspapers, and ignore social media. Mm -hmm. So they are directing their information using one channel. And on social media, the discussion is going on. Someone is saying nasty things about what you're doing. Mm -hmm and you cannot be part of that conversation because you thought social media is just a place for people to joke about. Mm. But it is a serious uh, form of media, and those who take it seriously invest uh, both time and money in it so that they, they get a holistic uh, uh, flow of information. Mm. Actually, the most, <laughs> the, the most important thing that I've seen in Rwanda uh, and that, that people must be aware of is that we're not utilizing social media the way we should be utilizing it. How should we utilize it? You find that most young people are actually spending their valuable time and putting it to waste. They're either posting pictures of themselves, they're, they're either on, 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 on WhatsApp groups, you have like 29 WhatsApp groups on your smartphone, <laughs> and maybe your boss has asked you to write something for them, and it's going to take you a whole day to just draft a paper. Why? because I'm, I'm on WhatsApp. Hi, Tuvi. Hi, Alan. Are, are we going out tonight? We, you know, we spend all our valuable time on that. So it's quite important for us to notice that in every organization, in, in a ministry, there must be a social media policy. Oh. Teach people how to use social media valuably, mm -hmm. not put their valuable time to waste. To waste. Not uh, spend can my I, can time I add on something on, on, on both? As you add that, as we, as, as we near the end of the show, because I'm being told we are running out of time, but mm -hmm. I want us also to answer this very important question, very important debate that has already started uh, uh, happening out there, uh, not just based on what has been happening uh, here in Rwanda, but also with what other public figures and, 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 and leaders are, are, are doing on social media. There's this question that people are asking, should or who should actually manage the Twitter or social media accounts of leaders like the president? Should they do it themselves? Um, and, and if they do it themselves, because they could be tweeting or posting something as a personal you know, uh, tweet or post, but then it's interpreted as a national uh, address or statement. How do we differentiate that would you advise that presidents stay off social media and let it be managed by professionals or people who have been trained for that? Or should we let them just, it's your tool, do what you want, speak, say what you want to say? 
Yeah, it, it's the president's tool to communicate with people. It's leaders' tools to communicate with people. Um, I think people are interested in the personal voice. It's why President Kagame's Twitter account is so popular, you know, recently reaching over one million. It's because people know that it's him tweeting. You know, with all with his, they know his style, they know his voice, um, and they know when it's when it's not other presidents in the region tweeting. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure you can. <laughs> see, <laughs> we we know that, but we know President Kagame tweets for himself, which is excellent. Mm -hmm. um, it's a tool for them to use, and I think it should continue. Mm -hmm. Who should manage? Should he manage himself, or should someone? I think do there it are two him? things. Mm -hmm. uh, being a president does not deprive you of your rights as a citizen. He, Paul Kagame is still president. He is still Rwandan. And he's in office because of the Rwandans. So I believe he needs to be himself and he needs to be put to task to be able to, 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 to be accountable to the people who put him in office. Mm -hmm. So he really needs to be there to communicate for himself. And uh, something else is that there's a Twitter account for the government. Mm -hmm. And that is supposed to be managed by, you know. A team. A team, a team of either the government spokesperson or the Ministry of Information, whoever is in charge, and that is the most official account that people who want maybe whatever you want is so serious, you want uh, a document here, you want some information about that, which you think the president might not be able to know. Uh, and should, you should go that straight... Office, should that office that is managing the social media account of the president, should mm -hmm. it have come to the rescue of the president during this someone tell Kagame Twitter hashtag growl that was going on? Do you think they, they were supposed to come to the defense of the image of the person of the president when this hashtag was going on? Oh, yes. No. Why? Uh, because I think the hashtag itself wasn't an offense to the president. Actually, no, although there are people who are it, uh, tweeting yes. some it depends on how you but, but again, if you, you are someone you who been, if is someone who didn't understand the social media, this hashtag was actually there to tell Pekka what other people think about him not necessarily to destroy his image. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the office of the president is... Did you really read that? that, that, that the, 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 there right. was uh, really uh, nasty... Yeah, yes, <laughs> I, 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 yes, I don't I think you did. I, I agree with that. Because it was there's reminding him of his legacy. No, no, no. It, it doesn't matter if the, it is, uh, you know, reminding him of the, his legacy. Yeah. The point is that person has something he's feeling. Mm -hmm. Maybe the, the choices so of the words... So the office of the president, the people who handle the Twitter or social is media... Not not there, is not there to defend the president. Mm -hmm. Is there actually to save the people. Mm -hmm. To listen, even if someone is angry mm -hmm. or is asked misplaced, they are there to listen mm -hmm. and to solve the issue, mm -hmm. not necessarily to protect. We have the Minister of Justice to do, do that. Don't you have a feeling that and insulting a head of general. state is insulting the people themselves? Uh, no, 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 it's, it's different. Let, let me, let me, uh, you see, if I use your, uh, your analogy, I will mm -hmm. say this. Mm -hmm. Whenever Pekka uh, tweets something, even if he tweets in his own opinion, mm -hmm. he's tweeting for the whole opinion of, of the government if I use your analogy that way. Mm -hmm. So they, therefore, if we go with the, your analogy, then if the government tweets and says, no, we don't agree with this, then that will be like, oh, the government doesn't agree with the president. The president. Because if we use your analogy, so mm -hmm. the, the president of uh, Kagame mm -hmm. is still an individual mm -hmm. who represents mm -hmm. his own views. Mm -hmm. If we want to know the views of the whole government, we will listen to what the account of the government, of the wrong government is. Do you, do, you think, do you think office of the government of the president the, the ones handling the Twitter account or social media, do you think they should have come to the defense of the president? No, they did not have to. Because uh, the way it all started is uh, someone asked uh, a question mm -hmm. and the president responded to that person. And he responded exhaustively. He did not have to add on. Mm -hmm. So the next day, uh, Kenyans on Twitter started a hashtag mm -hmm. uh, about the whole uh, conversation that had happened between mm -hmm. these two. And that is all Kenyans uh, who are using the hashtag. So the, the government uh, Twitter, you know, the, the Twitter machinery is not, is not there to fight battles. Mm -hmm. It's there to give information. Yeah. So if this is just an exchange between trips, you, you can let it happen. Why do, Regardless. We, why do, do we have PR for government? Uh -huh. But, but PR, Why do we have PR, PR to build the in, image in, of yes. a country? In fact, in fact, it's paid wrong. High in fact, paid it's wrong to have a PR. Yeah. In fact, it's wrong itself to have a PR because the government is there to be clear. Seriously? So that yes, it's 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 wrong to have a PR because mm. let me tell you the truth. 
why are you having PR when your services should be your PR? Mm -hmm. Unless you are telling me I'm not going to serve you, but I'm always going to feed you with tweets that gives you hope that I'm saving <laughs> you. <laughs> having a PR itself is it's wrong. wrong. It's, it's, it's wrong. So Faith, what, what do you want what, in, on this issue of, of saving the image and uh, you know, the, 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 the person of the president when such attacks come on, online? Do you think that the president's office or his team on Twitter was supposed to come to his defense? Uh, they, they wouldn't have come to his defense. I thought they would have shared information, valuable information, to whoever started the discussion on why mm -hmm. Rwandans think it's important for him to stand for a third term. Mm -hmm. so but that, that information is shared by Rwandans every day. We, we, we're not sure why he, he brought up the, the debate. You have that information, um, you share it. You know, you it's, a a account, it's a you perception. It. You yeah. think mm -hmm. the Kenyan who brought up the debate has that information. Mm -hmm. But it's wrong for us to assume for somebody else. Yes. We should put ourselves in, in this, you know, this kind of situation that probably he has no idea. And honestly, if, if I was outside Rwanda, I would also be wondering, why would people want someone to stand for another term, three terms in office? Yeah. I'd be very concerned. So you really need to know, you need to, to do background research and know why is this happening in Rwanda. We have, just across the border, we have people who are, you know, up in arms fighting their president, who has gone into a third term just, you know, by force. And just across the border in Rwanda, we have more than three million people who are pushing the president, actually pushing him to go for a third term. So there must be something, there must be a reason, which if I was a journalist, would have put to book. If I was doing PR for the government, would have said this is the reason why uh, Rwandans have chosen this way. So, you so it's up to you. So sort of laxity or oh failure yes. on their part. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as we finish, I'm told we only have two minutes to go, but I want us to share those two minutes as we now probably give our final thoughts on where is the position or place of social media in building democracies. Is social media the next frontier in, in, in pushing for access to good services and democracy in our nations? Uh, I'll start with you, Faith, since you are still having the floor. Uh, I believe that it's a major tool, one of the major tools that will promote democracy in, most especially in our developing countries where we are, we are we're struggling to build institutions. So if you want to build an institution and not depend on a president for <laughs> a decade, for more than 20 years in, in office, then we really need to build institutions. And there is no way we're going to manage if we do not incorporate a social media policy in mainstream that in all uh, aspects of this country. Mm -hmm. I want it, I want it to, to, to be, you know, to, to, to be a, s a culture that every day of an, an institution, every minister has a smartphone, has access to his Twitter account, and will be able to at least, I know they're very busy, mm -hmm. but they'll save at least an hour to flip through all the tweets that went through uh, his account and today respond. and respond to and that. Respond. And save time and mm -hmm. save money and, mm -hmm. yeah. I'll let this. I, I, I don't think it's the next uh, frontier. I think it is happening now. It, it's, it's not a future thing, it's a current thing. And it is uh, a very important tool because it empowers almost anyone to, to be heard, to say whatever they want to say, because it takes away the role of the gatekeepers. If you look at the traditional media, newspapers, TVs, radio, they all have editors who say, I don't want this, I want this, I don't have space for this, I have only time for this. Social media just opens up for everyone. So it's, it's like a, a community platform, you know? The way people exchange ideas after Uganda, that's Twitter. That's Twitter. Yeah. David, as we move to the end, what, is your, what are your thoughts on how we can positively use social media to build democracies and have it play a role in national development? Sure. The doc democracy is about being part of a conversation. You know, it's about being part of the decisions that affect your life. Whether it's the water that you get and how clean it is, whether it's the health care that you get, whether it's the education that your children get. You know, it's being part of the decisions that create that environment. So social media, as Alan said, it's happening already. People being part of those decisions, they're being part of those discussions online. Um, the, the, the next frontier, the new frontier, is for institutions and even businesses as well to get even better at engaging people. Mm -hmm. You know, voices, uh, your voice can be amplified on social media, which is excellent. And now it's about, you know, improving this conversation so that it does play that role that it can play. Mm -hmm. 
Nelson, as we finish, some time ago, some years ago, blackberries were given to almost all, you know, key officials in national uh, positions for them to be able to tweet and to be able to join social media platform. Your message as we go, what role can they play in also ensuring that they are part of this uh, issue of social media and of course building democracy and national uh, capacity? So, uh, I think they all have smartphones. They have even money allowances for communication <laughs> and then actually we should ask them what they use about their money because they are not engaging with people. And the second thing I think, uh, not necessarily that uh, social media is going to build the democracy itself. I think it's going to drive the conversation and then against people. But we still need uh, activists. We still need people, individual people, who actually go and sit with their politician or decision makers to raise an issue and then discuss about it in a preferred word. Because I don't think like. Uh, 140 characters will go to save anything there. Mm -hmm. But however, it's. It's a way of generating ideas, mm -hmm. engaging people. But we still need the combination of platforms where we get the ideas, drive the conversation, but also individuals who listen and then go in those offices and say, these are things we need to do. And, and act about it. it. Yes. Thank you so much, uh, lady and gentlemen, for your conversation and thoughts on this particular discussion, right? It's time we had and it's time to go. <laughs> we'll keep this conversation going and of course thank you so much for you who has been tweeting thank you so much for you who has been sharing your thoughts on this particular uh, discussion or conversation it ends here but of course it has to continue and always I encourage you to keep this conversation going on social media platforms and use the hashtag debate 4 and one tell us your thoughts on the role of social media in building democracies and the nation and we'll see you again next time my name as always is Eugene and now we're goodbye for now.